Hello, 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 everybody. It is I, J Malls of J Malls Gaming, here today with my rundown, my opinions, my thoughts on the tank changes coming in Final Fantasy XIV. Endwalker. That intro will never get old to me. And for tanks, honestly, probably one of the least changed roles outside, like, maybe melee ranged. So, let's get into it. It's also the role I probably have the most experience with in this game. So, let's talk about the general tank changes so far. Using defensive enhancements at optimal times will grant greater benefits. I know there's been a lot of speculation about what the heck this actually means. Because we don't really know. They didn't really show us exactly what they mean specifically when we, they refer to this. Just that when you use, say, a defensive, they want to have uh, an additional effect outside of just mitigating the damage properly. To reward good gameplay. And sure... I thought it worked pretty good with Blackest Night. It, you can run into a bit of an issue with Blackest Night, right? Where you cross a certain threshold where you have so much gear where you just don't pop the Blackest Night, in which case you don't reap the good benefit of it. Like he did with lower gear, which just feels bad, in my opinion. So if they can tweak it like that, because honestly, all this reads to me is that every tank is going to get something like the Blackest Knight. That's all it reads to me. Because we all saw the tanks that have like some kind of like defensive ability in the showcase. I think they did. I know Paladin did. Either that or it was just like they upgraded Sheltron and they're going to augment Sheltron to do that. Dark Knight already has it with the Blackest Knight. And Gunbreak and Warrior easily could as well with another defensive or something. It's... To me, that's what this screams to me, is that we're just going to give Blackest Knight or a similar effect to all the tanks, and make that a core thing about tanks in general, not just with Black Dark Knight. And again, it's so long, I feel like if they don't tie it just to how much HP you, you lose, like, if they just make it some other number, or some other requirement outside of damage taken, based on the percentage of your health, then it will probably be fine because that doesn't. Because the main thing I want them to avoid with this is running into the same problem with the Blackest Knight. Because I love the Blackest Knight. But right now, I have quite a lot of gear, and not a lot can actually, you know, pop it unless I'm like level synced or something, which kind of just feels bad. So if you can avoid that, I'm all for it. And adjustments will ensure combos are not broken by range attacks. I think everybody has said this is a good thing because to me, this is. This is nice, it's really, it's really good, a really good change. I don't buy the freaking argument that it's a skill thing to not break your combos while having to move out of things. Even if it is, like, yeah, sure, you can say it is a skill thing. It's not an interesting one. It just feels bad to be in the middle of a combo, and then all of a sudden you have to do the actual mechanic and play correctly and move out of it. And then when you're out of it, you have an ability that's range that you can, you can at any time use to do some damage, but it'll break your combo and just have a run-on effect. That doesn't feel good. So I'm glad they're doing this change. There'll be parity between the physical and magical damage attributes of weapons at the same item level. Yeah, that's just math. Don't worry about it. So let's move on to individual tanks. So let's move on to the Paladin. The class I'll probably be maining outside of maybe, like, Reaper. <coughs> so, Paladin had quite a bit of an illustrious showcase during the job actions trailer, if I do say so myself. Requiescent will now be equally effective regardless of remaining MP. Thank you! Again, this is another, like, little mechanic of tanking that I, that sure, you can say is a skill gap, but I wouldn't call it an interesting one. And just letting me be able to use Requiescent whenever, it's probably just going to feel better. I do wonder how it's going to tie into this con defeat to your combo. Because here's my thing. Do you have to use the entire Confidior combo? 
within Requiescent. Or the do you use Requ or do you use Confidia that ends Requiescent right then and there, and then you unlock the new combo? I think it's going to be the latter, but if it's not, then I feel that'll just be clunky with timing and stuff. Like, yeah, it's not gonna be that hard to do, but it's still not gonna feel fluid. If it's the latter, which I think is probably more likely to be the case, where you pop work you use your use your instant cast spells, then you end it with Confidior, that ends your Requiescent buff, and then you unlock the Confidior combo. I think that's probably what's gonna be. And my only main concern is are they going to be on the GCD or OGCD? Because I know the answer is probably going to be like 95% likely to be GCD. Because that might just feel a bit slow for me. Because my main thing with Paladin, right, is I kind of always just wish they had a little something to do OGCD. Like, you have, like, your instant cat. You have, like, spirits within, right? Sure. And you have your AoE dot. Cool. And those are cool, mind you. And you have Sheltron, and you have stuff like that. But when you're in Requiescent, you just kind of end up spamming your spells. And if you if you don't have it lined up so where you have your your OGCDs within the Requiescent window, then it just feels kind of slow. Because you really GCD locked in that case. And I would have just like again, these not the full like it says right here, this is not the full list of additions and adjustments, only examples. If they can just make it so you have something OGCD to press within that Requiescent window that's a bit more consistent, then that'd be three thumbs up for me. Either way, I still really like Paladin. Like I'm not trying to say Paladin's a bad job or anything. I really enjoy Paladin. It's probably my favorite tank so in the game in Shadowbringers right now. But it's just a little something I would have liked to have seen just to round it out a bit more. Now, a tank I actually didn't like. Let's go to Warrior, shall we? Oh boy, Warrior. Okay. Damage up effects can now be triggered and extended by AoE combos. Good, good. That, to me, that's one of the things where it's like... I can't see an argument against it. This is just a good thing. And we'll just make it so I don't have to do a single target combo in an AoE environment. Because that just never feels good. It This, to me, treats AoE and single target as equals. And it doesn't make it feel like your single target rotation is more important than your AoE rotation. Even when you're doing AoE. I like that. And I like how that's going to play and I hope that for any other job that has a similar mechanic that they extend this same thing to them as well I think they addressed it but eh. so onslaught and upheaval will no longer drain the beast gauge this is an interesting one because yeah sure the gap closes are no longer on the no longer gonna cost beast gauge good because that was stupid that they even had it in had a cost beast gauge to begin with. It was the only tank that had a resource requirement for their gap closer for some freaking reason. Sure, you can you can say clap job identity, but even then, if your identity is just being worse than the others, I don't think that's a good identity. But then you have upheaval, and then you have onslaught. Because Upheaval no longer drains the Beast Gates, it's essentially just an OGCD. And sure, it does kind of just make it lose just that little bit of pizzazz of, dra of not draining the be of draining the Beast Gauge. So you so you'll be free to use it outside of in a release now. But it does kind of lose a bit of its identity. It's not like a gap closer where movement is involved, like Onslaught, right? Onslaught no longer draining the Beast Gauge, in my opinion, is objectively good. Because that was a bit of a class identity that did not feel good. Upheaval, though, was a DPS spell at heart. And it did feel kind of good 
to be able to use it freely within in a release. It was like the one thing I liked about Warrior. But it's probably a change for the better. It's just a growing pain of mine. Because I'm not the biggest fan of Warrior anyways. Because of this next thing. A new action will be available upon execution of inner release. And it also seemed like they're going to make inner release a 60 second cooldown, right? In which case, they're also augmenting it. So instead of using five fell cleaves, you're using three now. Cool. Because inner release was my biggest problem with Warrior. Because it just devolved your entire big cooldown window to spamming one button and to me that gets old really fast so sure i don't mind playing it every once in a while but i couldn't main the thing but if you're gonna make it less of a spammy spammy boy and also give it a little something extra to use within that in a release even though it gives me big just star diver vibes I actually did not start that. It gives me more. It gives me big confitio, Shadowbringers confitio vibes. So it does kind of feel like how Dark Knight just kind of became a warrior esque job in Shadowbringers. Now warrior is just becoming a Paladin esque job and sh a Shadowbringers Paladin esque job in Endwalker. So I'm a bit concerned about that. Again, we need this. I need to see the full list of changes for warrior. To make a real appropriate judgment, but the changes we do have, I do like adding a little something, adding a little bit more pizzazz to end of a lease. You're no longer having to drain resources with the gap closer, and AOE not feeling like a slog to use. Cool, I'm all for that. Let's move on to Dark Knight, which will probably not take long whatsoever. Because Dark Knight did not get much, sadly, in my opinion. Because there was, like, one room... Like, I like Dark Knight in general. There was just, like, one thing I think they could have done to Dark Knight to make it a bit more interesting. And it seems like they haven't. Again, not the full list of changes, so maybe. But in my opinion, if you were going to augment living... Uh, your involved, like, living dead. And living shadow. You would have said that here. Instead, you elected to say Salted Earth will now affect the area immediately around you. Make a new action available. Thank you, Salted Earth was always freaking annoying, especially within the 14 engine, to actually deploy. I always felt like I would press it and it wouldn't actually go off, so I'd have to like, spam it a little bit. Now that it's just the area around me anyways, cool, and it unlocks a new action available. So I have another thing to think about. Good. I like that. I think that's a good change for Dark Knight. Your Simulcron will also get a new action when you acquire one of the new job abilities. That's the interesting bit. Because my biggest complaint with Dark Knight and Shadowbringers, right? Because I really enjoyed the overall gameplay flow of it. I thought it was a more interesting warrior. My biggest problem, though, was Living Shadow because... You had this big new signature thing. This new big I job identifying ability, right? By summoning Esteem. This shadowy warrior to stand next to you. Or shadowy Dark Knight. And fight alongside you. And it just kind of boiled down to a fire and forget ability. And to me, that was kind of underwhelming. But it seems they are augmenting it in such a way where it'll get a new action. When you acquire one of the new job abilities. I hope that means it's no longer just fire and forget. Because I am of the opinion that Dark Knight doesn't need that much. Coming from a fun perspective. Because Dark Knight overall is fun to me. It's just this living shadow thing. Where there's room to make it more interesting and gameplay impacting. Than just press it, it summons, and it does some passive damage for you. Because it's essentially a glorified dot. That's essentially what it is. And I'm hoping that this change augments it so where it has some layer of interactivity. And makes it a bit more engaging and enjoyable to use. So with that said, let's move on to Gunbreaker. Gunbreaker is an interesting one. Because... They don't seem to have fixed my one main glaring issue with Gunbreaker, and that is the AoE sucks. Like, I don't care about the numbers. Like, mechanically, it's the most simplistic thing ever. 
You have a AoE dot. You have like a two button combo. A cartridge spender. And Bob's your uncle. Compared to the intricacy of the melee combo. Of the single target combos. You have with continuation. You have a single a single target dot on top of the AoE kit you already have. It, it just felt like this job was designed to be played in single target and not in AoE, which is fine. And for like DPS in my opinion. But for a tank, I like having AoE va variety in my tanking. Re regardless of the tank I play. Cause if I play a dungeon where most of the dungeon where like a large chunk of the dungeon is gonna be AoE. Having something other to press than one, two, three, one, two, three. Oh, I can press a four now. One, two, three, one, two, three. Having something outside of that is fun. And they don't seem to have addressed that here. Again, not the full list of changes, so fingers crossed, but I didn't see anything really gonna help that case. We saw like an ability or two, in which case, hopefully. I mean, fingers crossed, but it doesn't, like, one ability, one additional ability. The ability I'm talking about is the one where he jumps up in the air and does that, like, X attack into the ground. Like, maybe that's a fun and useful ability for AoE. I kind of doubt it's going to be used that often, in which case the main crux of my problem with Gunbreaker remains. But let's get into the actual changes here. So the condensing the main combo, Savage Claw, Wicked Talon, will now s swap in for Nashing Fang, like how continuation works. Good. I like that they're condensing that combo. So it just it's a it's strictly reducing button bloat. And sure, I can see like some arguments against like condense one button combos for PvE. I can see arguments against it, but in this case, in my opinion, especially with how it interacts with continuation, I feel it's going to be more satisfying to press 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, than 1, 4, 2, 4, 3, 4. It just, to me, more tactilely will be more... It will. It's just going to feel better to press, in my opinion. And it's also going to reduce button blow. I'm not of the opinion that Gunbreaker has too many buttons. I never really understood that argument, because I don't think it does. But, hey, this retains the gameplay while reducing the number of buttons, so, cool. Continuation will also be used following Burst Strike. Thank God! It, giving me more of an excuse to use Continuation is A-OK -okay in my book. That's easily the most interesting aspect of the Gunbreaker uh, DPS kit. And I'm really looking forward to see how that plays. So, yeah. Those are the tank changes. Not that much. And I think that's a good thing. Because in my opinion, tanking didn't need all that many changes. The main fears we had with tanking was that they were going to become too homogenized. And too samey. And you, I kind of get that feeling with Warrior becoming... Getting a uh, Confitio-esque ability. But overall... Keeping them largely the same with a few quality of life improvements is A-OK -okay in my book. So, next up, we are going to be covering the melee, physical, damage, dealers! And that will be in a video for another day. Thank you all for tuning in. My pleasure for making the video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like and subscribe. And comment down below with your thoughts, your opinions on the tanks and Shadowbringers and the changes we have seen so far for Endwalker. Stay safe out there, everybody. Have a great day. And I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye, everybody.